Hello, Cathy. Hello, Welcome Cathy. to my uh, Birmingham Trade Union Council uh, website. Uh, we, we are going through very difficult times at the moment, and it's, uh, what we are experiencing has been unprecedented, certainly in our lifetimes. Uh, and I think uh, what th this period is quite busy for trade union movements in terms of what we mark as uh, annual events uh, that go back to centuries. Uh, one of the things that we will be marking uh, by the end of April is the Workers' Memorial Day. Uh, can you tell our viewers what is the significance and how does the Workers' Memorial Day is marked in Birmingham normally? Right. Well, Workers' Memorial Day commemorates all those killed and injured by work. Um, it's been on the go since the 80s, um, first uh, by the Hazards Campaign from Birmingham originally in, in this country and then for the rest of the world. Uh, we got it from America. And what we say is, remember the dead, but fight for the living. Um, so we're raising key issues about what needs to be done. And uh, these are events that are happening normally in Birmingham and around the Midlands and now the whole of the rest of the world. In Birmingham, um, we usually, for some years now, have been having events around a plinth that was uh, erected to commemorate two people who were killed building Birmingham Town Hall. Um, but obviously this year we can't have hold an event like that, so it's produced some challenges, which we thought at first would be a problem. However, in some ways, of course, it also provides opportunities. And it's uh, a crisis in the midst of a crisis that people are very angry about. So health and safety has never been so important throughout the entire world. Um, so in some ways, it's actually easier to get the message across to a wider group of people um, and to get them involved, sometimes from home, if they actually send up photographs of, of, of placards about things that they feel and so on. Um, so it's such a huge issue everywhere, but it's been very hard work trying to adapt to the uh, changed in conditions. Now, um, one thing that we are planning uh, locally, we are, along with other places, asking people to have a minute silence at 11.55 for workers to down tools. That's 11.55 obviously in the morning, just before noon. Um, this, this was originally uh, commemorating uh, workers who have died in this particular crisis. So um, it's something that we all feel very strongly about and we hope to be able to encourage lots of people to do. So, we also, in Birmingham Trades Council, want to hold, a, we plan to hold a memorial and rally instead of the event that we were going to have um, online. And we'd like to invite other people who support the Workers Memorial Day idea to take part. Um, right, so please make sure that you and other people know about these events. Yeah, see, this year particularly, I think the workers and particularly those who are working in key health and safety uh, places, people who are actually providing us some of the essential services and looking after uh, the people who are ill, uh, are facing tremendous health and safety challenges uh, because of the corona crisis. Could you tell us what these challenges are and what trade unions and workers representatives are doing to ensure key workers are uh, their health and safety is secured uh, right well worst of all of course are the workers who are in the front line uh, keeping our health and services going um, the health services of course and then it's in becoming increasingly obvious and uh, clear that uh, care services whether it be residential care or domiciliary care in, in, in homes um, are every bit as, as, as much in the front line. But uh, of course, um, that also covers anybody who is who's actually a front facing, a public facing role. Um, I'll let 
Ian say more about what our particular delegates have been telling us about the pressures that puts on people. However, um, I'll just say that everybody that's uh, in that position is at risk both of their own health. We've already seen people dying from uh, COVID-19, health workers, transport workers, and so on. Um, and it, but it's not just about those deaths, it's also about the um, risks and the fear of spreading COVID-19 to the families of those workers, to the public, and also to their colleagues, um, which has raised an awful lot of issues around um, safe protection. Now, what has been uh, a huge issue this year is the lack of any kind of protection, let alone the most suitable kinds of protection in terms of protect personal protective equipment, PPE, and also uh, testing, uh, making sure that workers are working safely with adequate social distance, distancing, um, and also countering bad advice to staff where the, their needs have been put long after the actual uh, needs of the company. So what we're saying is that uh, those workers and also um, even more so in some ways, workers in an insecure employment uh, with the least rights um, who are most likely to not take time off because they've got no sick pay and everything. Um, it's a huge, huge crisis. Now, one thing that uh, we have, um, that workers have and the reps have done is to make sure that uh, First of all, their uh, pay and conditions are, are looked after. Again, I'll leave Ian to say something about that, but um, huge demands have now had been made over the appalling situation about P PPE and, and, and the lack of testing. Um, so we've got uh, trade unions who have been instrumental in making sure that the government has provided uh, such help as has been made so far uh, and, and also agreements for workers that improve on that legal minimum and also um, making sure that individual workplaces have uh, safer working conditions. Now, um, when you look at, um, when you look at the situation Groups of workers have, have loudly protested, louder and louder every week. You know, it's not enough to be just clapping for our health service. We have to be making sure that they have uh, safer working conditions. So um, unions are, are in the forefront of making sure that uh, where it, it is possible to improve on, on, on that situation, workers have been getting more rights. Um, we've also had Groups of workers coming together. This is really important. Um, groups of workers have been coming in, into action groups, and uh, even in the West Midlands, as well as other places, that we have a West Midlands coronavirus action group that started, which uh, has been raising demands, has sent a letter protesting about how awful the situation is, um, and suggesting that. Uh, local industries be repurposed to something that they have started to happen since that letter went out. Um, so I think that's just an example of, of the real importance of trade unions and what they're doing for us. Yes, it seems to me that uh, our government, well, particularly the National Health Service and some of our public and uh, services were not really ready for this type of eventuality that occurred. Uh, what do you think were the reasons behind it? Because I think this is going to increase the number of casualties as a result of the virus. Uh, and uh, do you think austerity had anything, any part to play in this lack of preparation? Absolutely. Um, and when we talk about casualties, obviously we're talking about deaths which are growing, uh, but it's also the casualties in terms of any long-term effects that have transformed people's lives and the suffering uh, that they're going through. 
so don't forget that side of it. But um, we're talking really about years of cuts to services, about austerity, privatisation of services and, and, and parts of the health service, casualisation of work that's put people uh, out into self-employment and zero hours contracts, part-time work and so on, um, about increasing inequality uh, and racism and immigration controls that have stopped workers coming to this country and are partly responsible for the, the staffing crisis. You know, when we had a situation, um, I think it was 2009, when uh, the, the uh, swine flu uh, epidemic happened, the NHS was in a far greater state of res readiness then, um, with a far better infrastructure. If, if things were now as they were then, we wouldn't have had anything like the same problem. Now, the, uh, the Hazards Campaign issued a statement recently uh, saying, uh, with research into how inadequate the, the uh, how inadequately the, the, the warnings uh, had been uh, taken and also how, how deep these uh, effects have, have slashed the services that we have and, and made us a state of unreadiness that has caused the real crisis that we've got. I mean, the lack of personal protective equipment, there's no real excuse for it because we should have known, we were warned, and right from the very beginning when, when the crisis and even other parts of the world happened, and the warning signs were being made and publicly stated from such organisations as the World Health Organisation, we just didn't pay attention as, as a, a government. Um, Testing was available in the early days. It got stopped in, in March. Uh, they're desperately trying to push it all together again. Uh, so, yes, absolutely, cuts in austerity are very much to blame. Uh, so, we've, you know, we've had a system that puts profit before people and it's left us in a terrible state. I think testing and actually tracing is probably one of the most significant ways of actually reducing casualties and, and ultimately deaths uh, as a result of this coronavirus virus. And I think Germany has proved that quite uh, conclusively. And I think we should learn from that. I think ultimately we need to really also start looking at post the coronavirus. Uh, and I think the coronavirus is actually uh, the emergency has, uh, you know, brought some issues, uh, like, for instance, how we treat people who are actually key workers. This crisis has identified who are actually key to our health and safety to uh, provide us the services that we, we rely on and we exist on. Uh, so what do you think the trade unions and the workers' movement should be doing post-coronavirus to ensure yeah. health and public services workers do not face the same situation as they face today? Well, starting from your point, Naeem, um, I think that uh, the key workers that we've come to depend on and that we're applauding, um, we and they will not be as prepared as they were before to accept the low pay and the low status and the poor conditions uh, that we have been accepting uh, right up till now. And all over the place, I've heard people saying, never again. Never again should the public health services and the infrastructure be allowed to be in such a state of unreadiness. Never again will we accept what we've accepted up until now. Um, and we're not going back to what it was before. That's the other thing that people are saying. Uh, we're not wanting to go back to accepting government complacency and attacks on our rights and conditions and putting up with ignored lessons that should have been learnt already. Um, and we do not want more worker austerity and cuts to public services, which is what put us there in the first place and will almost inevitably be the answer that governments are putting forward because it's been a very expensive uh, job that we've had to go through. Um, we have to pay, 
point the finger where it actually belongs, not where, you know, some poor person who, you know, gone out to public beauty spot in a car or something like that. Um, it fair and squarely belongs with a system of uh, government and, and putting a profit before health and the government that we've got who, who were prepared to ignore what they were being told early on and were not um, putting people's needs first before cutting back the health service and shredding it the way that it has been. So we need to be making demands now and we need to uh, take them into the future. I mean, right now, uh, we absolutely need to be demanding more PPE and uh, uh, testing. Um, but in the, in the future, we're, we're talking about um, asserting the right to, you know, we deserve safe jobs. We, need, we deserve decent jobs. We need a higher priority for good health and safety. Um, and the Trades Council and trade unions in general need to be gearing up to the challenge of uh, how they react to a whole new intake of people because hundreds of thousands of people have joined. They've seen the need for to, to join unions at a time when um, we need unions the most and we need to challenge the prevailing situation that's led to the present crisis. Uh, we need to fight for an NHS that's fit for purpose. We need to recruit and strengthen our connection, recruit more workers and strengthen our connection with the workplaces in uh, our cities and be organising on the ground fighting against racism and welcoming workers into the country. And in Birmingham, we've already started to look at how we can make that challenge. Uh, we need to be working more closely with different organisations, both of workers and in the community. We had um, already agreed that uh, later in the year we would have a joint meeting with the Mid Midlands TUC Health and Safety Forum, for example, on air quality and work environment. But, you know, we need much more of that kind of thing where um, we're jointly campaigning, you know, not having any sectarianism, but uh, prioritising improved working conditions, improved safety, um, improved dignity in the workplace. Uh, we've started a group, um, a Facebook group, uh, Midlands International Workers Memorial Day, and we hope that people will um, start using that group and will send uh, pictures and clips for uh, what they've done on Workers Memorial Day, but will help uh, use that and other tools that we'll need to devise in order to build a better future um, and make sure that we're campaigning with workers in the forefront. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Kathy. I think we, the next thing would be the Workers Memorial Day that Birmingham Trades Council would be promoting quite heavily this year uh, because of the significance of this, of the crisis that it has brought to our attention, how workers' safety is the least considered things in the current situation, circumstances. Well, so I'd I like think could, you, could you make another yes, go ahead. point on the Workers Memorial Day front? Because although it's all uh, focusing rightly now on uh, the coronavirus situation and the crisis, um, the theme that we were going to be talking about and focusing on was uh, uh, mental health and uh, stress in the workplace, work-related stress. Now, obviously, that hasn't gone away. In fact, quite the reverse, it is very much worse. Um, I mean, it's a huge issue, and particularly in, in view of all the cuts and the austerity that we've been facing. But this year in particular, we're all facing uh, stress. Um, you know, workers face not only the actual coronavirus threat, but they're having to work from home and cramped conditions, a lot of them, or they're still in, outside and risking their, their lives. Their children might be at home, uh, very difficult working conditions, they're not being given the wherewithal and the help 
computers and laptops to work with from home and all that sort of thing. Um, so it's a, it's it's never been a, a, a more apposite time to talk about stress uh, caused by work um, than in this case also caused by uh, a new virus. And the two things together is absolutely phenomenal. Thank you very much, Cathy.